Ladies and gentlemen, I'm upset. I've missed an episode and I've got the stick. It is Keelan's fault, okay? A lot of people might be thinking, oh, Lewis missed an episode because of COVID, because he was on the got stranded on the Gold Coast, because lockdown happened again and he got a little bit sad and didn't want to be funny. No, none of that's true. It's Keelan's fault, okay? As I said previously, you know, if I missed an episode, it would be Keelan's fault because it was his job to make sure I do my job. Now, can Keelan help it if a global pandemic forces us to work remotely? Yes. And I think he should feel incredibly ashamed for letting this happen. And if anyone has any complaints to send, send them st- directly to Keelan. I've got the stick and he will be beaten after this episode. Don't you worry. I always do my job. <laughs> that being said, uh, this is the final episode of Spearhead Sundays. It is over. Um, well, it's the podcast is going to keep going. The the host is just my final episode. The podcast going forward is going to be hosted by Trisha Paytas, um, and uh, that'll that she'll host the podcast for about six months before she has another mental breakdown and uh, and leaves the podcast. Uh, at which stage, I will resume control. Uh, the podcast will be 10 times bigger. I'll cut her out of everything and make my money uh, because that's really that's really how I like to do business, you know. Uh, the Frenemies podcast has ended. Obviously, she has a bit of time free in her schedule. I think that she should be hosting the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I will be taking 55% of the revenue, um, but that is to cover my costs. Uh, I need a lot of new new types of sticks to uh, hurt my editor with. So that's, you know, a lot of, a lot of expenses are through there. Um, I, I think the frenemy shit is, uh, is, is entertaining uh, as a breakup. I also think it's exactly what was destined to happen. Like, uh, of course that was going to happen. Hasn't that happened with every single person Trisha Paytas has ever worked with? I don't think it's Ethan's fault at all. Uh, I think that uh, I don't think he's he's done anything wrong. I think that he's just had to deal, unfortunately, with the fallout of of her mental illness, uh, and that's what happens. Uh, but I do think that uh, it's now, you know, opened up a potential business opportunity for a lot of podcasts out there. Like Frenemies undeniably made Ethan's YouTube channel ten times the size. You know. Like, it's so much bigger now. He's got so many more fans. A giant, massive new market of young women are flocking to Ethan's defense and are abandoning Trisha Paytas. He's huge on TikTok now. I think Trisha Paytas should start charging for this service. I reckon that what she should do is she should start up Paytas' social dysfunction service. uh, And what she does is you create some kind of uh, podcast vlog series, YouTube series with Trisha Paytas, and she guarantees you about six months of stability just to get things off the ground, just to get things started, do a few merch drops, get partnered on YouTube, make a bit of money. And then after that six-month period ends, uh, then you have about three to four months where she'll have a mental breakdown She'll cancel you on Twitter. Uh, she'll leave the show, and uh, and you you retain ownership of everything or your platform and everything like that. Uh, your cut goes from fifty five percent to one hundred percent. And uh, if you can survive the cancellation, you come out so much better for it. I mean, Ethan, congratulations, dude. You've 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 made it. I think that's a, an incredible move you've done there. I don't think he's done it intentionally, absolutely not. And and this is not a diss at Ethan. I like what he does and I always have. Uh, he's a he's a good guy. But I but also, man, imagine if he did do this on purpose, you know? Like what a genius he would be. I mean, that's what I want to do. I want to start a business with Trisha Paytas so she can have a mental breakdown in six months, leave it, and I get 100% control. And the best part, everyone blames her for it. I mean, that's that's a hustle, right? It's literally hustling Trisha Paytas. I think it'd be good. I could start an OnlyFans with her. I'd be down down for that. Um, maybe we could start uh, some, some kind of mukbang vlogging experience that starts off with burgers and good times and... Uh. You know, ends with her stir- storming off set and trying to ruin my life, which is uh, uh, unsuccessful, as as perhaps she even orchestrated. You know, maybe Trisha Paytas is a lot smarter than all of us, and this she did charge Ethan for this. 
It's a great way to start a little business. Start a business with Trisha Paytas. She storms offset, gets you cancelled. You retain the audience. She gets paid, starts a new podcast business. She's already trying to do it. She's trying to link back up with David Dobrik. The man needs the help. I mean, I talk about getting the stick. He applied a crane to his mate's head. You know, that's the level that I aspire to be. This is all I can afford, an empty poster tube, which, by the way, you can fill. Loosebeers.com, signed posters available now. You know, all I could afford was an empty poster tube. It's not even going to leave a mark, which is good for the police, but bad for my image. <laughs> I think that uh, David Dobrik needs Trisha Paytas back on board because she can be the villain again, you know? Like, at the moment, David, I, I love... David's response to criticism. Like, like you know, what a king. The, the entire internet was saying, hey man, you filmed your mate raping someone. And he was like, guys, check out this massive wagon I bought. <laughs> and, and, and it was like, okay, cool wagon. I like how it's, it's like bigger than life and you can sit all of your friends in it and go for a drive. But did you or did you not film your friend raping a few chicks and then post the video. And then David Dobrik's like, guys, we just went to Hawaii. Took all my friends to Hawaii. How sick is that? Look, my fat friend vomited after having too many McMuffins. You know? And everyone's like, yeah, cool. That's funny. Your fat friend had too many McMuffins. But but what's going on with Dirty Dom? And David's like, dude, would you like a Tesla? And everyone's like, yeah. I mean, the government's not, not looking after me. I can't afford health care. I might as well accept a Tesla from, from, the, the, from the guy who filmed his, his rapist, mate. No worries. And, and, I, and we love David Dobrik here, and I think he's a visionary. And I think he should be president, you know? David Dobrik should be... He, I mean, he, he's basically a politician. He sits around... He watches everyone else do all the work. He sends young men to their deaths for his entertainment. Ignores controversy. And every now and then he gives away a little bit of money. Make him the president. Lord knows he'd do a better job than Joe Biden. Where am I? <laughs> anyway, guys, welcome back to Spearhead Sundays. It is here. Um, I'm, I'm excited, you know to 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 potentially be uh, the biggest political satirist on YouTube now that Friendly Geordies is due for execution. You know? Like, obviously, you know, Jordan Shanks is a good friend of mine and uh, and I'm very sad to see him go. But, you know, with every, with every bad thing that happens, there is a silver lining and that is the guy who uploads a political satire video every now and then will now be taking the number one spot. That's me. So uh, my condolences to Jordan. I'm very sorry that you're having to go through this. My apologies to, to Christo for getting arrested by the police. But, you know, don't worry, man. I'll carry the torch. I will, I'll, I'll gladly find a home for all of your viewers. And uh, look, everything's looking up for me, you know. Maybe if I can convert even just 10% of Friendly Geordie's Patreon supporters, I'll be very happy. <laughs> no, it is, it is fucked. And I think that John Barillaro is an absolute coward. And uh, look, my thoughts are with Friendly, Friendly Geordie's. I'm supporting him in, in, you know, as many ways as I can. We're working on some things behind the scenes to help out Jordan as well as the public ways that we've helped him uh, too. So... Uh, I, I did want to talk about it a little bit more. Uh, I've covered it heaps in my videos and I talked about it on Luke and Lewis, but uh, I love you. So I'm talking about it here as well. Um, I think that it's, 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 it's a really gross display of power from a politician. Uh, and it's pretty fucking clear that uh, Jordan's next to me, I think. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like, I feel like that is the goal. I mean, even even Jordan's lawyer is talking about how, oh, we suspect there might be a warrant out for Jordan's arrest. And and uh, as speaking as someone who has been the scrutiny of police forces and task forces in the past, uh, due to due to my <laughs> less than public activities online, uh, it's fucking scary and it's very stressful to feel like you're being hunted. So uh, my my. 
thoughts and prayers out to Jordan. Um, those don't really do anything. So I've also put some money into the legal fund and I encourage you, encourage you guys to do so. Um, but uh, yeah, what else did I have here that I wanted to talk about? Um, with him? What else did we want to talk about with this John Barillaro stuff? Oh, that's right. He blocked me on Twitter. John Barillaro blocked me on Twitter after I made one tweet criticizing him for arresting one of my one of my friends as team members. Like I think I don't think a politician should be allowed to block someone they represent. Like don't you think that's a little bit fucked that a guy that I pay to represent my interests has blocked me on Twitter so I can't see what he's up to. I can't see how he's communicating with the people. Like politicians need to have a thick skin because the job is no matter what team you're on, half the country hating you and the other half being suspect that you're not doing your job. So I don't think a politician should be allowed to block someone. I mean, if, if I were threatening the guy or harassing him or sending him pictures of porn or fuck stuff, then yeah, sure, no worries. You can't have that in your replies because other people see it. But if I'm just criticizing the dude, that's the job. I don't think a politician should be allowed to turn their comments off. I don't think they should be allowed to uh, block people who aren't being abusive but are being you know, critical of them. I don't think a politician should be able to silence the people they represent on social media because that's how we fucking communicate these days. That would be like a, a, a politician stopping me from seeing their press conference. That's what social media is for a politician. I need a laptop charger. My laptop's going to die. Did that contribute anything to the episode? Did that... No, we're gonna we're not we're, not, we're gonna leave that in. You see, this is what I have to deal with, ladies and gentlemen. I ask a simple request from my employee to plug in the laptop so we can continue recording the episode, and he mimics me. And you wonder why I got the stick, guys. Support me on Patreon. I'll buy a longer stick so I can hit him from the chair. You know, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, Patreons uh, do do offer exclusive experiences and footage. Maybe that could be a reward. You get control of the stick for a day. And you don't have to do anything with it. You can just hold it. You know, it's your stick for the day. But if you wanted to use it, you know that's your right. New goal? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Uh, <laughs> oh, fuck. But yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to submit a freedom of information uh, request to get John Barillaro to unblock me on Twitter because at the you know at the very least, while I can't really support Jordan from Melbourne, I can annoy the people who work for John at least a little bit, you know. And, you know, and and that's that I feel is is every Australian's right. Like, and a lot of my fans have been banned on Twitter or blocked on Twitter and Facebook by John Barillaro. Hey. Submit a freedom of information request. It's really easy to do. It's like sending an email and they legally have to, at the very least, respond to it. So, you know, if John Barillaro is going to block everyone, let's block him from using his admin team because they're swamped by freedom of information requests from guys like 420sniper69. I want to see his tweets. Let me in. Fucking meatball. But yeah, I think... Um, you know what I'm really actually very disappointed by is not a single politician seems to have spoken about this at all. Like they've, they're all ignoring it, which to me is, is, is like silent confirmation of what I thought, which is they would love to do this if they were dealing with it. You know, like it, it may just be a uh, coincidence that John is the one to do this to Jordan. It may be if, if Jordan was fixated on a different so I shouldn't say fixated when we're talking about the fixated persons unit. <laughs> but if Jordan was focusing on criticizing a different liberal, liberal or national politician, because he probably wouldn't touch a Labour one, uh, would they maybe just do the same? Um, there is that like, argument that Daniel Andrews had death threats and all sorts of things happened to him last year. And he never, he never... That's true. Yeah. Daniel Andrews dealt with way worse than... Uh, than meatball like uh you know jordan uh, jordan at, at times will make you know pretty strong statements against someone and will satirize them and take the piss out of them and make them seem ludicrous but it's nothing compared to like 
what I would assume is regular death threats that people like Daniel Andrews would get, uh, that you know that liberal politicians would get all the time as well. It's like what? Why isn't the fixated persons unit doing shit like that? You know. And I got a lot of comments of uh, I posted a little sketch from my video of of me uh, falling over and hitting the woman and and killing the dog. Uh, because uh, if you haven't seen the video, basically the fixated person's unit ripped Christo out of his home, which is basically like Jordan's keel and it probably gets hit less. Um, uh, they ripped him out of his home and uh, the, the mother claims that the police officer uh, hit her and then almost killed her elderly dog. And then in the video, the officer's like, no, I didn't. I tripped over. I tripped over. And basically I was like, how the fuck did you trip over? And in the time, the space of time of you standing to you hitting the ground, you managed to hit a woman and almost kill a dog. I feel like that is very unlikely to happen in one motion if the guy truly was tripping over. Seems like it was a scuffle. The man used more force than necessary to me, right? Uh, and I got a bunch of comments from people going, oh, you know, where's the footage of this happening? It's like, well, the footage is uh, there of them running away from the cops and getting shut behind the door and a big scuffle happening. That the the period of time where the camera goes crazy to the the woman saying you've hit me is like 15 seconds. I don't know if you've ever fallen over, but it takes about two seconds. I'm six foot eight. For me, three seconds, right? It's a little bit longer. I've never fallen over and then had the time to check the time on the way down. Like 15 seconds from standing to hitting the floor? I don't think so. That's a fucking scuffle, right? Um, and also, isn't this police officer supposed to be uh, trained to take down terrorists, that are about to kill politicians. Like, that's his job, is to find people who are planning on assassinating politicians and committing attacks of terror. If that can't, can't arrest an internet nerd in front of his mom without falling over, should he have the job, you know? Like, I think, you know, he didn't even manage to kill an elderly dog. Move him to a different task force, you know? Like, I, I'm almost, as a taxpayer, disappointed that he didn't kill the dog because that proves he's not even capable of it, you know? I think they should have driven a, a, a SWAT van through the fucking house and demolished the entire thing. Isn't that what I'm paying for as the fixated persons unit? Why is Christo still alive? I don't think they're even capable of doing their jobs. What, a bit much? I'm just saying, if you're going to use the fixated persons unit, use them properly. <laughs> you know, like you what? You can't even arrest an internet nerd in front of their mum without tripping over yourself, you fat fuck. Hit the gym, bro. Join a martial arts class. I don't think you're cut out for the job. Do you know what your son did? He harassed a politician at a funeral. Okay. Even if he did, which he didn't, right? He was, do, he was committing acts of journalism in a public area. But even if the dude yelled at a politician at a funeral, does that justify the fixated person's unit getting involved? Absolutely not. If he was threatening to hurt him, if he was threatening to kill him, if he was th you know, threatening and you found evidence of him committing, you know, planning an action that would result in violence, fuck yeah, throw that cunt in prison. We don't need that shit. But he wasn't. He was criticizing the guy publicly based on the politician's public actions and things that were in the news, like the lawsuit. Fucking insane. But that's the level of commitment I expect from you, Keelan, is that if I say something, right, especially if it's false and defamatory, and I get sued, I expect you to do something that gets you in prison. <laughs> well you're not getting paid unless unless you know we can get a laptop in there you can do some editing <laughs> then you'll get just over whatever the prison pays for their labor it'd be like 50 cents an hour <laughs> it's a good deal you know Greeley was getting like a fucking 30 cents an hour making t-shirts 50 cents that's a bargain we might, we might have to we might have to we might have to 
dig under the prison to get an Ethernet cable in, in your cell, run it through the toilet. But, you know, <laughs> we can make it work. So, yeah, I, 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 in all seriousness, I think that uh, what John Barillar has, has done is one of the most blatant um, displays of, uh, of an overreaction from a politician and, like, swinging power that they should only ever be used as, like, a last resort. Like, you're, like let's, the fixated persons unit is an anti-terror squad, so that should be a last resort situation like we are absolutely sure that this guy is going to harm a politician or the public in a big way we need to move on them like it's not something that you that should be wielded against a youtuber's fucking employee or like after they've getting back from uni because they said a few things that hurt the politician's feelings or they didn't even say any didn't even insult the guy asked him a question twice and then he drove away cops at your door it's some totalitarian shit, and I don't think Australians should stand for it. Another thing was uh, a lot of people were like, oh, what about Avi Yemeni? He copped the same from police. Why didn't you stand up for him? Well, I've never seen Jordan throw a chopping board at his wife. So, you know, I also disagree with what happened to Avi, but I'm not going to be like, got to help that guy. Hey, man, maybe don't throw wood at your wife. You know? And and if if jo- look if look let, to be fair, if Jordan also piffed a chopping board at his girlfriend's head and then went to court and said, "Yep," and I almost got it, I would maybe distance myself a little bit. That's all I'm saying. Good on you, Harvey. Maybe work on your throw next time. Fucking hell. Um, what else did I want to speak about? Probably some inane bullshit. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right, yeah. But the, the biggest issue that I have with the fixated persons unit is is how they were dressed. You know, like, I understand that they shouldn't be in uniform. You know, they should be plain clothes police. But, but maybe business casual, at the very least. Like, if I'm getting arrested by plain clothes police, I want to see a button-up, at least. You know, these guys rocked up in sweaters and chinos. What, are you guys going clubbing? You guys go in a cloud? You're almost 30. Get some fashion sense. Dress well. Keelan dresses better when he comes to work than these people did when they were arresting someone. And this cunt sometimes doesn't show up with shoes. You know? Sometimes he'll rock up barefoot and I'll be like, well, you know, whatever. At least he's not arresting me. How are you going to kill a dog in, when you're not in a button-up? That's what I think. That's the real issue with this, is the way they were dressed. I did really like, there was one guy that was very nice, you know? That was, it's always funny when you see, like, like when you see uh, instances of American police doing shit that goes viral, it's always like a cop, like, uh, it, it, it's always like a cop, you know, deciding not to kill a homeless person. And everyone goes, wow, that's so wholesome. Good on him. You know, I'm like, wow, this, this police officer gave a ride home to a homeless guy when it was zero degrees. Yeah, dude, otherwise the guy would have fucking died. I'm not impressed, bare minimum. Wow, good on you. This, this police officer decided not to let a homeless woman freeze in the snow. Let's make that go viral. Back to blue. No, that's your job. All right. I mean, I couldn't do the job. But also, I'm not impressed when you do the bare minimum, right? That's the only time a a cop goes viral in America is when they do something that's like, wow, they didn't kill someone. Or, wow, they did kill someone, you know? Like, whenever you see, like, videos of of cops arresting someone and it's going viral, every single one of the cops is like a mega cunt. You never, ever see, when one cop's going too far, you very, very, very rarely see other police going, hey, buddy. This is what's happening, you know? You never see good good cop, bad cop is what I'm saying. I've seen one video where uh, it was during the Black Lives Matter stuff, I believe. One cop just went way too far, beat the fuck out of someone, and then a female cop arrested that police officer. And I thought that was sick. I saw that and I was like, fuck, that's cool. That's the only one I've ever seen, right? 
But in Australia, you when, when cop interactions go viral, it's usually one really cunty officer, but then like his mate who's kind of cool, like, you know? Like I'm like, fuck, I'd love to play chess with that guy. You know? And even when even when Krista was getting arrested by the cops, there was the one guy that fell over and almost like and that how Australian is that? Like the guy in charge fell over, hit an old woman and almost killed a dog. And then the other young guy who was wearing like a cool grey sweater was like, Don't worry, you can film this. Here you go, you can film this. He even filmed it. Did you notice that one of the cops helped them film? Like that's like I understand that this is a horrific display of of power from a politician, but you got to give it up to one of those cops who helped the, the victim's family film it. Don't worry, I'll get a I'll get a good shot. No worries. You know, like if that was if that was America, they would go. Don't worry, I'll help you film it. They would take the phone and they would they would put it in a gun and shoot it into space. Like American cops wear body cams to film everything and the only thing they do with them is turn them off. Oh, it malfunctioned. And the last thing you see is them flipping it upside down. Is it still filming? And then that's it. And then in the background, you just hear, ah! <laughs> you know? So so even, I'm not saying that it's good what happened. I am saying that even when the police go too far, there's one of them going, ah, don't worry, buddy, I'll film it for you. And if I go to prison, that's fair enough. You know, you got me. <laughs> oh, fuck. What else do I want to talk about? Um, oh, so uh, ScoMo met the Queen, you know? Thanks, man. Fuck, I was really, wo- I was really worried about you know COVID and the country and 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 you know are there going to be more bushfires or have they solved that problem before summer comes along and uh, you know uh, are they building a quarantine facility and what's going on with our borders and are we going to have the vaccine that doesn't make your brain explode uh, and make you grow a dick you know and it's good to see that Scott Morrison the leader of our country is 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 prioritizing very important things like meeting the oldest bitch on the planet you know the the woman who who hasn't done anything for her own country for about 50 years you know the 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 widow of of the racist guy who helped me sell a bunch of tickets it's really good that he's doing important things like i mean should scomo even should anyone be meeting the queen when there's covid I feel like I could go and she'd die. If I went and I had COVID, it'd be over. But apparently there's a video that Keelan wants me to watch that I've not seen. Okay. All right, let's have a look at this. This is Scott Morrison meeting the Queen. Okay. Here we go. Oh, good morning. The Prime Minister of Australia, Your Majesty. It's very nice to see you. In yeah. person this time. Yes, Your Majesty. <laughs> it's wonderful to see you. Come over here and then they want to take a photo. It'd be off. lovely. Um, so you, you, were, you were down there, but I didn't see you in, at, uh, in Cornwall. No, that was, that was just the G7 members. We had uh, you were just well, a, a we were an extension group. partner, <laughs> as they yes. call them. But uh, you, were, you were quite the hit. <laughs> Everyone was talking about you at dinner the next night. Oh, <laughs> oh Lord, were they ready? They were. I mean, that's 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 how I talked to my grandma when <laughs> after she had a stroke and she was in the hospital and I wasn't sure if she could hear me. <laughs> <laughs> Just telling her about my day and I'm like, I don't even know if she's still alive in there. <laughs> Come on, dude. She's <laughs> she's fucking treat her like. <laughs> Come on, but now I'm sad thinking about that. Yes, they, they were they were quite the hit. Everyone was talking to you, you old bitch. Are you even alive? Fuck, Scott. 
This guy, I don't think I've ever to- ever seen him talk to someone without treating them like they're brain dead. Like, oh, well, this person isn't me, so they must be fucking retarded. Uh, yes, hello, queen. I'm the leader of Australia. She's like, God, I own you. I own you. I I probably could have made sure you guys had vaccines and I didn't. Fuck you. Lick my boots. I I fucking hate him. And it's and I, I, I never hated any of the other liberal leaders. I didn't I feel like he is making turning me into Jordan Shanks where I'm like, "Man, if you look at that guy and you go, that's my boss. Fuck you." I don't know. I've never disliked someone that much. I don't know what it is about him. It's he just seems so fucking elitist and uh and better than you. The way that he talks and the smugness at at which he operates is just it just pisses me off on on a level I can't even explain. Like when they were like, "Oh, hey, uh, it uh, it looks like Melbourne's going to go into lockdown. Are you going to help them out?" And he was just like, "I'm sure the uh, the the state leaders are are doing their best." Bye, <laughs> guys. This episode of Spearhead Sundays is brought to you by Manscaped, the best pube shaver in the game for men and women. Something I use very regularly. I make Keelan uh, shave me after every episode. Uh, use code Spears for twenty percent off and free shipping. And we've got some new copy here. <clears throat> this one's entitled "Ow." All right. Talking points. Host to scream really loud. Ah! Oh fuck! Well, whatever comes to mind. Uh, <laughs> those are the screams I used to make when I would cut myself. Well, look, I didn't. You know, I feel like if I, if I was if I was shaving my balls and I started screaming while I was living in my mother's house, she might kick down the door. Uh, but, but you know, then again, those are the screams I used to make when I would cut myself shaving, shaving before I knew about Manscaped TM. You need to try this out for yourself. The Manscaped TM Lawnmower TM 3.0 has been beautifully designed to reduce those painful nicks and tugs. Stop pulling my balls! Get 20% off and free shipping with the code, insert code, it's Spears at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code, insert code, Spears. Always use the right tools for the job, TM. They trademarked that. They trademarked always use the right tools for the job. Did they invent the term? I don't think so, but you can't say it anymore. Um, Do not read. Host to talk about a time. Well, I've already done that bit. Um... Man, the waterproof technology allows you to shave in the shower. And when I tell you this is premium, I mean premium. The battery will last up to 90 minutes. So you can take a longer shave to all my Arab listeners out there. Uh, Manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS, 20% off and free shipping. It's really good. I do joke with the reads, but it's something that I use really regularly and I love. Uh, And uh, you should get it as well. It supports the podcast. That's how we keep all of this spinning. That's how I will afford a longer stick. Um, So definitely use code SPEARS, Manscaped.com. It's a bloody bar, Jane. <clears throat> I've had a great week uh, today because uh, I uh, uh, just, you know, quarantine ended and I'm like, oh, great. We can get back into work. Keelan's coming, came back from Canberra. We're just about getting ready to start working on everything. We've been putting out videos again, as, as you have seen, uh, and we're back to doing the podcast. I'm like, man, this is going to be so good. We're going to be so productive. And then the first day that we're back into work, I get a strike on my channel uh, and uh, over a video that I released in 2015 because I was supposedly promoting a violent terrorist organization. Uh, the video is actually a classic of mine that kind of is, I think, a little bit underrated. Uh, it's actually one of the few videos pre-2016 that I think is still watchable, uh, which is, um, it's, what's it called? It's, uh, uh, it's something about Turkish air. Oh, I'm selling out to make advertisements. That's what it's called. That's what I got striked for. Uh, and it's it's this hilarious video where I get approached by an airline to make an advertisement for them that they will then maybe pay me for. 
So I just decided to fuck with them. They're not going to definitely pay me, so I'm going to fuck with them. And I decided to make these, I make these series of like terrible advertisements for them and then send them to the guy for review. And he treats me seriously the entire time, keeps telling me to remake them. And every time I remake them, they get worse and worse and worse and more fucked. For whatever reason, it got copyright struck. Uh, I think perhaps because of the 9-11 footage I included. <laughs> There. But I said that Turkish Airlines didn't. 9 uh, 11 didn't happen with Turkish Airlines. I said it like it was a good thing. I didn't say that 9 11 was a good thing. Um, you know, what, what, who am I? Bin Laden? Um, but uh, that got my uh, channel, a strike on my channel, which means I couldn't upload for a week. And if you get three strikes, your channel is just fucking deleted. So it was very scary. I disputed it. And uh, miraculously, they actually removed my strike, which is great. And I was like, okay, cool. Now I can get, get to uploading. And we make this Friendly Geordies video. And we make this Logan Paul boxing video. And just before I'm about to upload the Friendly Geordies video, my entire channel... Every single video gets uh, monetization switched off and I can't turn it back on. And I'm now I know that a lot of YouTubers talk about demonetized. That's actually a step above monetization switched off. So there's monetized, which means you get ads. Love that, you know. There's demonetized, which means you make maybe 20% of what you would make because you only get some ads that are from businesses that are comfortable advertising on risky content. So, you know, like weird apps or fucking, I don't know, guns will advertise on anything because they're like, we make sure the kill counts. Um, and then there's monetization switched off, which is off. No ads, no money at all. And every single fucking video was had monetization switched off. No warning, uh, no error, I reached out to a bunch of other YouTubers. Apparently, this uh, Max told me that this happened to Chad on his on his channel, and it took fucking two weeks to fix. It's not like an action; it was an error. Uh, so I'm like frantically emailing everyone, my YouTube network, my partner. I reach out to YouTube themselves, and and the person I'm talking is like, "Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to email you later." And I'm like, "Well, fuck, man. If I have ad switched off for two weeks." That just literally costs me money because you have like a backlog spinning and all this kind of stuff. So I'm freaking out. I'm like, oh no. Now I won't be able to afford the big stick. Um, <laughs> uh, but then I checked today and they're all on again. And I've had no confirmation saying that we fixed it. No reason why it happened initially. Just like the most terrifying thing to happen to a YouTuber next to getting their whole channel deleted is just having everything switched off because, you know, if everything's off, you're not making money. Like, you can see on my stats, the mon if you look at the monetization tab, it's, like, pretty steady, and then it just dips down to fucking zero, and it's, like, zero for days, and then it's back up. I don't know. So, guys, support your favorites on Patreon, even if it's not me, because, dear God, YouTube is fucking stressful. Um... <clears throat> But that's all right. That's all coming out of Keelan's paycheck. <laughs> uh, so, uh, man, I think... What else is there? Oh, yeah, there's uh, there's uh, the new the Grand Theft Auto. I've been playing Grand Theft Auto, and I am, I've am i almost finished the campaign. By the time you guys hear this, unless you're Patreon supporters, you get early access. Uh, by the time I, you hear this, I will have finished the campaign, and I'm just about ready to try GTA Online. Uh, and they've just announced that they're like switching off service for GTA Online for Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, which I didn't even know had GTA 5. Like that's how, that blew my mind. Like I know Grand Theft Auto 5 has been out for ages, but that really blew my mind of like, oh fuck, that's how old it is. We've now been two console generations and it's still, they're still there. Uh, and they're just starting to not support online services for those uh, players, which is fucking crazy. Like, even they are like, yeah, like, get 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 a new game, you know? Who the fuck is still playing Grand Theft Auto on 360? Do you lose your whole account, though? You can transfer it if you're on Okay, that's fine. That's good. At least you can do that, you know? Man, I... do. <clears throat> oh, they stopped moderating it. So it's just hacking. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Yeah, it'd be chaos. There is there is something magical about being fucking toxic in video games. Like there's just something spe- it's one of my favorite things to do. Like I remember I used to play Grand Theft Auto 4 online. I think I've told this story before where you used to have, it was a little bit different from 5 where it wasn't really an open world. You could go in events that were like fixed uh, and there was races where you could pick your car and it's a set track and then it's a race and it's I think it was like eight eight races. So me and three other friends, half the race, we would join it and we would select buses like the biggest, longest vehicle in the game. And the, and, and the minute the race started, we would all just drive directly to the narrowest part of the track and line up all four of the buses in a row, just blocking the race so that you couldn't push past because it was four buses so that all of the other people had to just fucking leave the game or desperately rage at us over Mike, telling us to fucking leave. And we would laugh and laugh and laugh. There is... Absolutely nothing funnier than completely ruining someone else's experience in video games. Terrible when it happens to you, makes you angry. But if you can get three other boys in a lobby and just fuck it up, it's great. It really is good. Another one we used to do, we would jump in Left 4 Dead matches and we would get three of us and it's four people on a team. And the objective of the game is to get from one area of the map to the other. And we would just make sure that the guy that was not us would just get killed again and again and again and then blame it on him. And they would get so fucking angry, but we would pretend that we were not friends. So we would just gaslight the fuck out of this poor stranger and go, have you ever played with this guy? I'm like, no, I've never played with this guy. Who is he? Do you know him? Is this your friend? He goes, no, this is just a random lobby. And and then all three of us would just gang up on this poor innocent soul, just trying to have a great time. And they would end up just going insane. Uh, And and it's a really good way to to make a a stranger just trying to cool off and enjoy their day off and their leisure time, have a complete mental breakdown uh, over the internet. It's a really good time. What else did we do? Oh, yeah, I did this recently. We, we joined a, a Team Fortress 2 match. You get five of us. Uh, there's eight teams, eight players aside, and every new person that would join, you just vote, kick them. And, and they would go, what have I done wrong? And then you would blame them uh, for doing something that you can't even do in the game. And then they would go, what? And then all of your friends who are pretending <laughs> not to be friends would then go, oh, my God, I saw him do it. And then everyone just votes and kicks him out. And it's the funniest thing you've ever seen when you hear one guy, when he sees the confirmation that every single person on his team has voted to kick him for something that he did not do. The funniest shit ever is hear him going, you motherfucker! that! <laughs> and then you read, this person has been kicked from the game. And that, guys, is, is I could do... Te- like a series a whole limited podcast series on how toxic i have been and continue to be in video games it's one of my favorite activities and that's what i'm going to leave you with today is organize a few of the boys or a few of the girls and just go out there and ruin someone's experience online you won't regret it it's a lot of fun and you don't need to be abusive that's the funniest bit is never actually be rude. Just be so fucking annoying and dumb and then get three friends, pretend to not be your friends. You say something so fucking stupid and then they all agree with you and act like the other guy's the idiot. It is the funniest thing ever watching a sane person go, what is happening? And that's where I'm going to leave it, guys. Thank you very much. That's Spearhead Sundays. I'm going to continue on a little bit for the... uh, the Patreon supporters, if you want uh, the Sunday supplement, the Patreon exclusive uh, podcast that is up right now, uh, you can check it out in the link in the description and the top comment if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, and uh, I've got my tour uh, just about locked in. It's going to go on sale in the next couple of weeks. So keep an eye out, everyone outside of Melbourne, uh, within Australia. I'm going everywhere. We've got like 14, 15 shows booked. It's going to be fucking sick. Biggest tour I've ever done. And I can't wait to see you there. Um, also, send me some emails. I'm out of emails from Miscellaneous Bitty End. Podcast at lewspears.com. If you need some life advice, 
message me. Or, fuck, if you've got a story of how you were toxic in video games, I'd love to read it, all right? That's the end of the episode. Thank you. Fuck you. Uh, and uh, next episode will be, uh, we'll be hosted by Trisha Paytas. Goodbye. Have a shit one. Buy my shit, buy my shirts, buy my merch and no one gets hurt. Buy my shit, buy my shirts, buy my merch and no one gets hurt. Buy my shit, buy my shirts, buy my merch and no one gets hurt. Buy my shit, buy my shirts, buy my merch and no one gets hurt. Buy my shit, buy my shirts, buy my merch and no one gets hurt.